Today on the channel, we've got a horror-themed Jack's Ruthless Aggression unboxing. Welcome everyone, Kyle here, back to the channel with a Jack's Ruthless Aggression unboxing video. Some of our favorite videos out here on the channel. Uh, and today, in honor of Halloween week, 2020 as this video is being posted, it's the week of Halloween. And I'm going through finding the most horror, supernatural type themed things that I have in my collection to unbox. And today I said I'm going to dig through all the Ruthless Aggressions I still have to unbox. And I'm going to take the most Halloween guys I can find out of there. We're going to start it with this Kane Ruthless Aggression figure first. So let's start with Kane Ruthless Aggression Series 7. And I always call this the Uncle Fester Kane because he looks like Uncle Fester to me. Now let's take a look at the packaging to begin with. Right there. So there he is, Ruthless Aggression Series 7. As we know, they change the packaging on these Ruthless Aggressions all the time. Uh, unlike the Jack's Classic Superstars, which we love so much, that uh, didn't change the whole run. But Ruthless Aggression got changed up every few series or so. Um, this is uh, an early one, obviously Series 7. Uh, the blue packaging. I Not my favorite, not my least favorite packaging. Uh, this one didn't stick around a whole lot longer, uh, or a long time like some of the other ones. Uh, kind of is what it is. But uh, there's Kane there. You get a different version of Kane pictured than what we actually got. You know, he's got the top on on the picture down here, but on the on the figure, nothing. So that's a little frustrating. Uh, you'd think you could at least match it a little bit. Um, there's the packaging there, and then here's the back of the packaging with the whole lineups there. Let's read through those. Uh, so we're looking at uh, Ruthless Aggression Series 7. This is the one that had the Randy Orton and kind of the bubble jacket, I guess you'd call it. It had Matt Hardy, Chris Jericho in vest. You had Chris Benoit in his black shirt, which was later re-released with red pants in the Off the Rope series. You got this cane, of course. Then you got Brock Lesnar. Uh, Brock Lesnar in that uh, kind of 80s muscle-building uh, Gold's Gym type uh, outfit he's got on there. And then below that, they're promoting the Adrenaline set with the world's greatest tag team. Uh, the John Cena-Eddie Guerrero two-pack from their famous street fight. I always call that John Cena working during the day at his auto mechanic job, coming to wrestle that night. And then the last one, you got the high flying set of Rey Mysterio, Billy Kidman. You got the uh, Elimination Chamber down here. And then the Raw Ring. Uh, does that say 12 and up? Parental guidance suggested 12 and up. Product based on television program content recommended for ages 12 and up. Very interesting. Don't just sit there. Spill your guts and let us know what you want to see in your WWE action figure collection from Jax. Write to us or email us and has the address. I wonder if anybody ever wrote to them and asked about that stuff. If you guys did, let me know. And then, of course, our favorite slogan of all time. Don't be a punk. Get them all. Well, I'm working on it. I'm trying to get every single Jack's Ruthless Aggression. Uh, I got a little bit of a standstill as we speak right now, but I'm trying to come through with all those. Um, there you go. Uh, a little known fact here. I don't know if you guys knew this. So he does come with the bedpan accessory. Uh, I don't know if you guys knew this story. I'll, I'll share it to you for the best of my memory as I remember it. But when Kane first started off, you know, he's been Dr. Isaac Yankum. He was the Unabomb. He's been all kinds of things over the years. But when he first started off wrestling, he was a very shy young boy. Uh, he was really shy in those locker rooms. Uh, you know, he didn't want to shower with the guys. He didn't want to go to the bathroom in front of the guys. So he carried around this bedpan in his uh, gym bag. Very interesting, very strange. I hear a lot of old-timers talk about it still. Me being the old-timer I am, I heard wind of that. But uh, even down the road, he wouldn't want to stop at a gas station. On the long trips, you know, would be against stopping at the gas station. So he'd carry this bedpan with him. He'd just do his thing right there in the car, uh, the side of the road, whatever. Use this bedpan, dump it out. You know, he'd always carry a big jug of water to wash it out with. But uh, Kane was a very shy guy back in the day. Very, very shy. You know, he's come a long way now from going to the bathroom into bedpan, to be too scared to be in the shower in the locker room with the boys, to being the mayor in Tennessee. So good for him, Kane. You've come a long way. But that is the story of the bedpan with uh, Kane there. So very interesting. Probably a lot of you guys didn't know that story. Uh, but I could be totally wrong. Somebody fact check that and let me know uh, in the comments. But let's open up this Kane figure. All right, let's get down to it. See you later. Obviously not my favorite Kane figure. I already said, I think he looks way too much like Uncle Fester in the head. Uh, just something has always been off on this scan. There's that bedpan. Can't wait to uh, put that with him on display. See you later. 
Love the stiff joints right out of the pack, though. I mean, you could definitely feel... If you buy a loose Jax Ruthless Aggression figure or you get one right out of the pack, I mean, it's just night and day. The plastic feels different. I mean, I think the osmosis in the air... One of you scientists that watch this, let me know the difference. But something about when he gets out of the pack, it just starts to feel different. But feels amazing right now, that's for sure. Stiff joints, nice, pretty, no scuffs, no nothing. He's got his uh, hands up here, but... Just that uh, Uncle Fester head just takes it away from me and just doesn't do anything for me. So, I don't know. There it is. That's Ruthless Aggression Series 7 Kane. No peg holes on the feet as most Jax Classic Superstars or Jax figures in general. Not even Classic Superstars. None of them have holes in their feet. But there it is, Kane. Like I said, probably my least favorite head scan of Kane of all time. But you got to get this for that bedpan accessory. And it fits right in his hand there. That's why he's got his hand like that. So he can show everybody, you know, this bedpan's been through some wars. <laughs> some wars on the road, eating a lot of bad food, you name it. But there it is. There's Kane Ruthless Aggression Series 7. Let's take a look at the next one. All right, next up, Tis the Season. We got some ECW action here. And this is one that's uh, probably the last figure I needed to complete my ECW set, if I remember right. At least the last one I need to open. And that would be Ariel, uh, Shelly Martinez Ariel. As we all know, when ECW came back, back in the day, a quick story, uh, they came back on the Sci-Fi channel, the Sci-Fi Network, and uh, they were tasked with getting some supernatural characters. And Ariel was one of those, uh, being a vampire. We had the zombie. We have Kevin Thorne, which we'll get to next, uh, another vampire. But they put a little mix of that stuff in there. Uh, and most fans of wrestling does nothing for them. Um, so it is what it is. It didn't last a super long time. Her WWE career didn't last a super long time. But it's cool we got at least one figure of her and Kevin Thorne to represent the vampires of ECW. Um, so there you have it. But let's take a look. Always love this ECW packaging. Like a lot of you, I'm sure, we had high hopes for the ECW coming on sci-fi. We thought we were going to recapture some of that old magic. It never really happened, unfortunately. But uh, at least it was tried, I guess. I don't know. Maybe you should have left the dead alone. No pun intended, being Halloween week. But there she is. Comes with that patented microphone. Because we all know how many ECW episodes she opened up just talking on that microphone for 20 minutes at a time. Uh, maybe I'm wrong on that. But uh, I think you had to give her some accessory. And they said, hey, this microphone's sitting around. Let's throw it in the package. But I said, I love the graphics. I love the picture up here. I love the ECW logo. Uh, very, very cool figure. Always love this figure. I bought this brand new back in the day, later sold it, now I have it again. Uh, you know, just the vampire character was really uh, something different we hadn't had in a Jax figure. How about that? ECW Series 2 that Ariel represents had Kelly Kelly, Bobby Lashley, Joey Styles, Mike Knox, Balls Mahoney, Elijah Burke, or B Mahoney as he's called for toys. Uh, there's that whole crew up there. And then at the bottom, got the other Ruthless Aggression lineup that's out. Let's see, what number was that? Ruthless Aggression Series 25. So we just talked about Kane. We got another Kane here with a much improved head scan. We got the world's greatest tag team, John Cena, MVP, and the great Kali. Got every single one of those. You've probably seen them on the channel. Uh, nothing else too exciting on the back of this one. So let's let's open it up. Let's see what, uh, see what Ariel's doing. Let's see what's going on with her. We'll see you later. Very cool. Always loved this figure, like I said. Uh, the patented female Jack's body with the skirt. I mean, we saw it many a different times, different head scan, uh, but that's only different. They saved a lot of money as only having one body type for all the females. Uh, outside of Vicky Guerrero, I guess they did have a different one for her. See you later. She's got a little bit of that Jack stickiness disease uh, on the skirt, as we usually see with these female figures on their skirts. Uh, always disappointing to me. Uh, but we've talked many times on the channel, you put a little packaging tape, the clear package tape, wrap it on there, stick it on real good, and then peel it off. You might have to do it two or three times, but that seems to counteract the stickiness of figures. I've also had that work with Ninja Turtle figures, a lot of different figures. Uh, so give that a try. I always hate the microphones with these female figures, uh, especially Lillian Garcia, who if anybody needs to have a microphone, it's her. Uh, they just don't hold the microphone very well. It's way too big for them. Um... It usually falls out of their hand, but I had it sticking in there okay. But uh, love the Shelly. You know, they even got her artwork of her tattoo. They got the streaks in her hair. You know, very Elvira or uh, Morticia or whoever you want to call it. Um, probably more Elvira. Did she have streaks in her hair like that? Maybe not. I think it was, uh, what was the Munsters mom? I think that's who maybe had the streaks in her hair maybe. And I think those were white streaks, but 
a very cool figure. I love the corset, love the skirt, love this figure. Probably one of the best Jax female figures for me. Uh, just because it represents such a niche character, vampire fangs on the teeth, cool look. Um, a very cool figure. So I like uh, this one. Happy I have this one back in the collection. Um, but that's it. Let's look at her counterpart. Let's take a look at Kevin Thorne. All right, next up is Kevin Thorne in the Ruthless Aggression line. I believe he was in the ECW line as well. I think he only had two Jax Ruthless Aggression figures, if I'm correct. Uh, this is Ruthless Aggression Series 31, so getting up there. Um, there he is right there. I always like this figure as well. Another niche character that's been forgotten in the sands of time. I always kind of wonder if a character like a Kevin Thorne is kind of like, for kids growing up, He's kind of like, for me growing up, the Ted R. Cities or the Outback Jacks of the world where just totally forgotten. Like, people say, what the heck was that? I wonder if they say that same thing about Kevin Thorne and people like that. I'm sure they do. Um, is, you know, is if you started watching wrestling in the 2000s, mid-2000s, you know, is that how you view him as a forgotten guy? Like, what the heck was that? Kind of like I say, Outback Jack, what was that? Even though Outback Jack was my first ever wrestling figure. Little note, there'll be a quiz down the line someday. Uh, so remember that. What was Kyle's first figure? Outback Jack. Um, so let's look at the back here. Ruthless Aggression Series 31. We've got Batista, a usual suspect in the Ruthless Aggression line. Kelly Kelly, Kevin Thorne, of course. Ric Flair, John Morrison, Jillian, and John Cena. Another one we see all the time. There's that lineup there. Then you can see the ECW lineup at the same, same time. That was ECW Series 3. We had Layla, Stevie Richards, Marcus Corvon, Monty Brown, Taz, Snitsky, Matt Stryker, and Nunzio. So that was another heavy hitter set. I like that set. I love that Stevie Richards figure from that set. <clears throat> so there we go. Uh, this is the Chase title belt series, of course, that they did kind of at the end of the Jax run, uh, the later days of Jax. But let's open up Kevin Thorne, see what's going on in here. See you later. Very good. Very good figure. Always like this one. I believe his ECW one came with a nightstick, similar to the Big Boss Man, if I remember right. Um, he does come with his patented cookie sheet. Uh, you know, we've had a lot of discussion on the channel about the cookie sheet from Jax. Uh, as most longtime viewers know, and probably people that don't even watch this video know, uh, that was built in because of Undertaker's successful championship win at the cookie competition at the Texas State Fair. Uh, back somewhere in the 90s, I think it was. But you know, part of the reason Kevin Thorne left uh, the WWE was he challenged, this is Undertaker, you know, mid-2000s. He's got a lot more respect than he did in, like, let's say, 93, 94. Uh, still a lot of respect back then, but, you know, mid-2000s, Undertaker was the guy. You didn't mess with him. He barged in to the Undertaker's dressing room with a hot pan of cookies, threw them down in Undertaker's lap with this very own uh, pan here, and they went at it. He said, my cookies are better than yours, Undertaker. I heard you won the Texas State Fair, but he also won, I guess, the Virginia State Fair, I think they said it was, uh, of the cookie competition with his patented oatmeal cookies. Who knew vampires love oatmeal cookies? Uh, there's no onions for them, but oatmeal, yes. Uh, he barged into the room, threw them down in Undertaker's lap. You try my cookies. They're better than your cookies, all this kind of stuff. They got to going. Next thing you knew, fists of cuffs were thrown. This actual cookie sheet, that is the indention of Kevin Thorne's head when Undertaker hit him with the sheet, disrespected him, saying his cookies were better. As we all know, Texas has a much bigger population than Virginia. A lot more people try on the cookies in Texas than they would in Virginia. It's just the way it goes. I mean, there's more people. Uh, so that's just the way that goes. But uh, huge dust up, huge locker room brawl over these cookies and everything. And then a couple days later, poor Kevin Thorne out of a job. So that is the story of this cookie sheet, how Kevin Thorne left uh, ECW of the WWE. Just wild times. Wild times in the mid-2000s WWE. All about cookies. Who would have known? Somebody can fact check that. I'm pretty sure I'm right, but I might be wrong. But uh, there's that Kevin Thorne. Let's pop him out. We got his cookie sheet, of course. You know, it's a double-edged sword. He does have good cookies, though. I think I saw him on an independent show at his merch table. He was selling cookies. He had a little toaster oven that he was making them at. Amazing. Just amazing. See you later. Uh, let's see. Kevin Thorne, I always love this figure, like I said. Uh, love the uh, paint applications there. You got that little, like, bat right there with the two swords. You got the tie. You got the uh, soft goods vest. And then I love his eyes. He's got the dark blue menacing eyes. One's kind of squinty. One's different. Love the Jack's fist. I always love the fist on Jack's characters. Uh, a very, very solid figure. And if you have a Ruthless Aggression figure, you need the Cookie Monster, Kevin Thorne 
in your collection is, uh, you know, he didn't have the longest of runs, but uh, for me it was memorable. I remember him very well from that ECW run. Uh, and, you know, obviously Ariel being his manager. Very cool to have these two back again. So there you have it. That's the story of Kevin Thorne. We got one left. Let's open up The Undertaker. All right, everybody, let's finish off this unboxing of Halloween-inspired Jack's Ruthless Aggression figures. And we're going to open up Ruthless Aggression, I should say Ring Rage Series 8.5. Yep, Ring Rage Series 8.5, The Undertaker. Now, I want to give a special shout-out to my boy Sambro. I'm sure he's watching this video, watches all of them. Uh, good brother out there, had this available for sale. He knew I knew, or I told him, hey, wait a minute, I need that guy. He got it to me ASAP, so I appreciate uh, Sambro helping us with this unboxing video. So I needed to unbox this one. And nothing says Halloween and the Supernatural more, or cookies as well, than The Undertaker for the WWE. So perfect time to open this one up. And well, let me tell you, there's a heck of a story involved in this one. As I just uh, jogged my memory when I took a look at it. It's almost like I made the story up on the spot, but you know that's not the case. But let's take a look. 8.5 Ring Rage Undertaker. A very interesting Undertaker. This is a mis mismatch mosh uh, monster mashup of Undertaker. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, that Undertaker shirt he's wearing is from like the 90s. Um, from his dead man persona. This is more 2000s Underbiker uh, motorcycle riding Undertaker. So it's a mix mash there. It's kind of weird that Undertaker would be you know riding his Harley to the ring in the mid 2000s and then have a t-shirt of himself on, let alone his self from the 90s when it's kind of a different character. That's so Jax, as some would say. I love it. A lot hate it. A lot of people would pass on this figure just for that because it's so inaccurate. It's just, hey, we got parts from this, parts from that. Let's put them together. Hey, we got a new figure. That's pretty much what this ends up being. Um, but I like this figure. I always liked the Underbiker. Uh, truth be told, not a huge Undertaker fan. Obviously, everybody respects the Undertaker and what he's done, but just never really clicked with me, the Supernatural stuff. Uh, even as a you know 11-year-old kid when he debuted, I was just like, what, what is this? Come on. Come on. You're, you're killing me here. Um, and that made me really jump into WCW even more back then, which WCW wasn't the greatest back in 91 either. That's a story for another day, but... Undertaker does come with his patented shovel here. Uh, we'll look at that and we'll talk about that once we get him open. But let's look at the back here. Uh, don't be a punk, get them all. Adrenaline Series 7 is promoted on the back. We get Christian and Chris Jericho, Tess Scott Steiner, Randy Orton, and Batista. I do need that Scott Steiner in the blue jeans. Uh, that is the, one of the few figures I'm missing from Jack's Class Superstar. I keep saying Jack's Class Superstar. Jack's Ruthless Aggression Area. That Scott Steiner, it's got to be the blue jeans. Not the black jeans, the blue jeans. I am missing that one still. Uh, loose, it goes for about $26. Not a terrible amount, but just more than I want to pay. But I'm going to have to pull the trigger soon. i got to complete this collection. Um, so I'll get it. I'll get it eventually here soon. Uh, promoting the championship belts. Those were never for me. I just didn't like those little kid belts. Then we got some rings down there. The raw ring in the elimination chamber. Uh, but let's open up. Ring Rage 8.5 Undertaker. You know, we've never got an answer as to Ring Rage. It's the in-between sets of the Ruthless Aggression. Why did they just call it Ring Rage Series 1? Why does it have to be 8.5? I've never... Why didn't they just call it Ruthless Aggression to make the series more? I, I would love to ask Jeremy Padauer that question. What was the reasoning behind that? Um, let's see. We'll get him open here. There it is. See you later. Oh, yeah. Say what you want, I still like this figure. Even though we've probably seen this head sculpt a million times, I love the bandana there. Uh, even the shirt's funny, the tattoo work. Um, and then, of course, the patented shovel. And speaking of this shovel, you know, this is quite the shovel. And you might notice at the end, there's blood all over it. That's crazy. But you know the reason for this, you know, I'm looking around. I want to make sure nobody else hears this story, but you guys hear it. Don't tell anybody. But... When Undertaker was younger, you know, growing up, you know, down in Texas, I think he was like 15, 16 years old, he had a, one of his first jobs. Uh, you know, he worked for his dad, I think, on the farm and stuff like that. But I think he had one of his first jobs working at a graveyard. Yeah, a graveyard. And he was digging... Um, he was digging the holes for burial. You know, he was he was basically an undertaker, a pallbearer, a, a grave digger, if you will. See you later. 
Uh, that was one of his first jobs back in the day when he was a young kid. Well, one day he's out there at night. He's got his lantern up and he's got to dig this grave because there's a big funeral the next day. I think it was maybe the governor's wife had died or something like that. But he's out there digging the hole, getting ready for the bodies and all that stuff. Well, he's digging, he's digging, he's digging. All of a sudden he hits something. He thought it was a rock. You know, when you're digging holes, you come across rocks and stuff. You just go power through them. Well, he was powering through them. And it was somebody, there was a drug deal that went bad. And there was a guy that the mafia down there in Austin, Texas, or somewhere in that Texas area, they were burying bodies under there, you know, that, you know, done the mob wrong. Well, he came across a fresh body and actually severed the head off that dead body with this actual shovel. And that's what that blood represents. Uh, nobody really knows this story. It's kind of on the down low. Just a few people know. But that is why Jax put that in there. It's kind of an homage to that, a little wink. Undertaker was not happy. Let me tell you, he didn't want that story out, doesn't want it out today, so please don't tell anybody that story. Um, but that's why it came with this. But that story might be wrong. I, I might have missed a few things. Somebody fact-checked that, but I'm fairly certain he decapitated a dead body's head with this very shovel. Shovel drop. But there it is. There is The Undertaker. Like I said, I do like this figure. As crazy and messed up as it is, uh, as that's so Jax is what people say. Um, and it's probably warranted here, but I still like it. You know, call me weird, call me whatever. Uh, a very cool taker. But a lot of good stories with this uh, this set. There's a lot more to this uh, down deep. You know, sometimes you gotta, it just could be a simple unboxing video, opening an Undertaker, a Kane, and a Kevin Thorne figure. But then it uh, turns off the rails, and you find some really crazy stories that happened along the way that have been totally forgotten with the annals of time. Um, but for me, you know, this Taker figure is probably my favorite, followed by Kevin Thorne, followed by Ariel, finally Kane, Uncle Fester, not a huge fan of that one. For you, what's your order? How do you uh, place them? Do you have these figures? Do you like these figures? Are these terrible figures? I'm sure a lot of people will hate this Undertaker. A lot of people should hate this Kane. I think these two are very solid, though. Uh, great accessories. Always can use a bedpan. Always can use a bloody shovel. A microphone. Always need that. And then, of course, a cookie sheet. I mean, holy cow. You know, after I close out this video, I'm going to take these two and I'm going to reenact that scene. I'm going to go play in my arena and reenact their fight over that cookie sheet that fateful day back in the mid-2000s where Kevin Thorne lost his job. But that's it. That's it for this Jax Classic. Why do I keep calling it Jax Classic? Jax Ruthless Aggression unboxing video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Leave me a comment. Like the page. Subscribe to the channel. I'm Kyle, it's Ariel, Kevin Thorne, Kane, The Undertaker. I'll see you guys all real soon.